Plastic Media Player for 899. Save 100. Or this Defy 15 kg twin tub washer for 3999. Save 600. Price is valid until 9 October. T's and C's apply. Hi Fi Corp, your number one deal destination. At Spa, we've checked every price, counted every coin, and cut every cost to bring you Spa Super Saver Week. Get even more for your money. Like Bacoma Wheat Bix for only $26.99 and Norox Stock Cubes 24s for just $17.99. It's Super Saver Week at Spa, 3 to 9 October only. Don't miss out. Exclusive to Spa Rewards customers. Customers. Good evening, dear viewers, and welcome to the News Bulletin at 8, brought to you by Nabar News Provider, a SWAT in a TV. I am Nundumiso Vilagata, alongside Zama Nzimanze, and here are your top stories. The Deputy Prime Minister Timba Masugu says government notes with concern the increase in the number of people with autism spectrum disorders in the world. The Minister of Health, Lee Zingo, says government will go an extra mile to ensure that Maswati do not die of cancer. Public sector unions have signed a 3% cost of living adjustment that was offered by government. The news. The Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu says government notes with concern the increase in the number of people with autism spectrum disorders in the world. Masugu said this during the launch of the Autism Fundraising Golf Tournament. Autism is what in board of directors Chepes in Senzu Shachoy says the launch of the Autism Fundraising Golf Tournament will assist the organization in raising funds to take care of 255 people living with the autism spectrum disorder in the country. We are in a drive to build a very, very big center. Um, we have at this stage identified potential land in one of our chief domes. And uh, God willing, we are facilitating final drawings of our structures and also finalizing funding opportunities to finance uh, this project. If, when the project is fully realized, Your Excellency, we will have a practical and physical space where people are able to come and find assistance on a daily basis. The Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu says the first ever autism survey carried out in the country in the Lubombo region reveals that one in six persons accounting for 16.7 percent of the Lubombo population has autism spectrum disorder. President of the Federation of People Living with Disabilities. For Sobongan Makama says disabled people should not be left out in any sports activities in the country. Parents of children living with autism spectrum disorder, Vice Chairperson Musa Mnis says they appreciate the help offered by the corporate sector, adding that it is challenging to raise children with this condition. Meanwhile, a certain Golf Union Secretary General Erin Ngumalo says the organization is committed in assisting autism as Swatini. For Swatini TV News, Fortune, Langa Mandla, with Viminko Sinzinisa Mpabane. The Minister of Health, Lee Zingo, says his government will go an extra mile to ensure that Maswati do not die of cancer. The minister was speaking at the Millennium Park in Manzini during the launch of the month of October as the Breast and Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. This year's theme for Breast and Cervical Cancer Awareness Month is Closing the Care Gap, the Role of Health Care Workers. The Minister of Health, Lee Zingo, has officially launched October as the Breast and Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, where government, through the Minister of Health, will not only focus on closing the gap, but will go an extra mile in ensuring the availability of all resources, including that for cancer patients. The Minister of Health, Lee Zinkos, emphasizes that early detection is key. Over 103,000 women have been screened for cancer. Over 103,000 women. Siboga is a vital cancer. 
She says Eswatini is one of the three countries that have reached the 95-95-95 milestone on HIV, which the country has done extremely well and is proud of. She says there is still a link between HIV and cervical cancer in order for Maswati to be safe from cancer. The director of the Eswatini Press and Cervical Cancer Network, Tengatilo Kpeka, says they will support the Ministry of Health in the rollout of the HPV vaccine. Our experience tells us that every cancer patient or survivor has a story to tell, just like uh, Susie has told us her own uh, experience. Tembingam Palala, a cancer survivor, thanked the Palala Fund, which helped her ever since the first day she caught the news that she had cervical cancer. It was when she was taken to Nelspreet for chemotherapy. <laughs> Tembi says families and communities should stop stigmatizing people with cancer. She applauds nurses for the patients they have showed her and others as well as the Swatini Prison Cervical Cancer Network employees. Last year, about 1,126 people died of cancer in the country and this year alone, already 913 have died of cancer. Reporting I'm Kian Msibi with Smova Shongwe, Manzini. The Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade, Mangoba Kumara, says the Kingdom of Eswatini will now have an effective measurement unit that will look into fair local and international trade. The Minister has been speaking in Parliament on Wednesday. When the House of Assembly convened for parliamentary work on Wednesday, Chairperson of the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade Portfolio Committee, who is also the Matlangacha Member of Parliament, Musangobo, moved that the Honourable House adopts the committee's report on the Measurements Unit and Measurement Standards Bill of 2020 that will focus on ensuring fair local and international trade. The chairperson was seconded by the Deputy Speaker and Mtlangatane Member of Parliament, Matala Mtlanga, on the motion. Members of the Honorable House commended the Minister of Commerce on such an important bill. The <laughs> This is for the good of the country. After the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade, Mangoba Kumalo, moved that the House constitutes itself into a committee of the whole House to consider the bill, the Minister appreciated the House for considering the bill. <laughs> The House of Assembly then constituted itself into a committee of the whole House to consider and pass the Measurements Unit and Measurement Standards Bill of 2020. Reporting for Eswatini TV News, I'm Sam Gelswe Kozabut Sikumbuzo Tlamini, Parliament. On another note, the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade, Mangoba Kumala, says with the Legal Metrology Bill, which is the legal enforcement of the Weights and Measures Regulations, the Minister has been speaking in Parliament on Wednesday. On another note, when the House of Assembly resumed for parliamentary business on Wednesday, Chairperson of the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade's Portfolio Committee at the House of Assembly, who is also the Matlangacha Member of Parliament, Musangobo, Move that the House adopts the committee's report on the legal metrology bill of 2020. The bill once passed into an act, it will focus on legal enforcement of weights and measurements regulations. The chairperson was seconded by the Deputy Speaker and Matlangatane Member of Parliament, Matala Mtlanga, on the motion. <laughs> Members of the House, including the Speaker Petros Mavimela, 
uploaded the ministry for this bill. <laughs> about monitoring the calibration of Lama equipment and this Lama measuring units. regularly. The only time but over the months, no matter the years, I never born in Noma Uliwa, hundred rand, no matter ten rand, and Nisho Nelila. The Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade, Manoba Kumalo, highlighted on the importance of this bill to local consumers. Nibonga Kulu in Lyonge, a parliament, a by school, Guspasa Lumbi, Le Report, Le Gakulu Bille. The House of Assembly then constituted itself into the Committee of the Whole House to pass the Legal Metrology Bill of 2020. Reporting for Eswatini TV News, I'm Sam Kalswekoza with Sikumbuzo Lamini, Parliament. Public sector unions have signed a 3% cost of living adjustment that was offered by government. The principal secretary and the minister of public service, Sipur Tabeza, says the PSU has also signed 1% once off salary increase to be backdated to April 1st, 2022. The minister of public service, principal secretary, Sipur Tabeza, says the agreement to the 3% cost of living adjustment and the 1% once off payment that will be backdated to April 2022 comes after the government negotiation table and the public sector unions snat nap snaga. The public sector unions wanted 7.7 .7 cost of living adjustment. Government offered 3%. Today, both parties met and uh, were able to reach an agreement uh, of 3% uh, uh, caller across the board with effect from the 1st of uh, uh, April 2022. And uh, over and above that, there will be a 1% of uh, uh, annual sa salary, uh, uh, which will be a once-off uh, uh, pay uh, to, to all civil servants. On another issue, uh, 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 I will just uh, mention that uh, government has also agreed to uh, hire a consultant who will review the salaries uh, uh, for civil servants uh, in the country. And we are expecting that he will start work in, in November. And uh, he has been given a, a period of uh, 12 months to conclude the exercise. And we are hopeful that uh, the recommendations of the consultant will be uh, uh, implemented during the 2023 2024 financial year. Sabeta says civil servants are in the heart of government. He encourages the cooperation between the two parties. For Eswatin TV News, Fortune Langamanda with Kian MC Bimbabane. The CEO of the Eswati National Council of Arts and Culture, Stan Lidlamini, says it is time for the Kingdom of Eswati to invest in the entertainment industry to improve the country's economy. Lamini has been speaking when launching the rebirth of the music industry carnival by the Eswati Mobile. Batali, Kulmisan Banfaben. Lempino say thing and people in Nesimo, Nel Temba, Nenjuto Ekat, Africa Wongan. The COVID 19 pandemic has impacted negatively on many sectors of the economy, especially the entertainment industry, and it is for that reason that the Eswatini Mobile has launched the first ever rebirth of the music industry carnival with the aim of promoting local artists as well as those from neighboring countries. Speaking during the launch, 
Chief Executive Office Hai the Swatini National Council of Arts and Culture Stendil Damini said, despite the negative impact of the pandemic, Eswatini has learned the importance of investing in local talent to improve the country's economy. When big corporates like Eswatini Mobile come into our entertainment space, come into our uh, festivals, is the legitimacy of the industry. You know when a big corporate comes to sponsor a festival within our creative sector, it says this industry is legit. This industry is one sector that should be taken seriously. Seriously by the people of Sozland, but also seriously by our government to say, we are doing business in the creative sector. We are doing business uh, in the entertainment industry. So whenever we see or we experience, we experience launches, for us it's a source of uh, celebration. Chief Operations Officer at Swatini Mobile, Maloba Msenga, says this carnival is the company's way of giving back to the community as well as celebrating their five-year anniversary. The carnival presents an opportunity to the local industry to showcase their talents. It's going to host more than 40 artists, both locally and out of the country, to the nation. At Eswatini Mobile, we pride ourselves that we're a local company that is locally grow grown. We are celebrating five years, and we've been growing steadily over the years. The carnival will be held on November 12th, and the Eswatini Mobile says first 200 Eswatini Mobile customers to buy the tickets using Imali will have it at a reduced fee of 150 emalangeni. Reporting for Eswatini TV News, I'm Sam Galsu, a cause of the Kombozo Tlamini, Ezulwini. The Eswatini Post and Telecommunications Company has officially launched a 24-hour whistleblower hotline. This service is open to all members of the public. The Eswatini Post and Telecommunications Corporation is setting up this hotline in partnership with KPMG, a South African-based company, in the drive to prevent fraud and corruption. The managing director for EPTC, Tembum Kululi Kumalo, says they will pay a monthly fee of about 3000 to KPMG for their services. EPTC has set up an anonymous toll-free ethics hotline available on the number 800 2323, which will ena enable third parties to blow the whistle anonymously and safely on all unethical conduct within the organization. KPMG will be able to receive calls in both official languages, that is English and Siswati. I would like to emphasize that the hotline is based in South Africa, and this will definitely provide the necessary protection to the whistleblower. We don't want to know who is reporting. They must be free to give us whatever information they have with unethical practices or conduct within the company. The Whistleblower Ethics Hotline 800-2323 service can be used by all members of the public, employees of EPTC, customers of the company, suppliers that we are working with, and any other company that has information. They need to use this facility to report any fraud that they can aware of or have seen, any unethical practice, business practice, or unethical business conduct that they have actually observed happening within the company. It could be in any form or even if including abuse of company assets. One of the core values of EPTC is working with integrity. Kumala also mentions that with this initiative, the company, together with its stakeholders and the public, can influence and promote a good business environment in Eswatini. Reporting for Eswatini TV News, I'm Tando Gushlem Luli, with Vumingo Sintenizam Babanem. The Chief Police Information and Communications Officer Superintendent Pinile Vilagadu warns aspiring police officers about people who claim to be from the police service, who send them messages to forward money to their accounts in order to get their uniforms designed, she explains. interviews. Sebat for the Imlaid, we would see Abatene, a my uniform, 
labanye batfola imlayeto yekuthi abathenge abafake imali kuma account lathite singemaphoyisa sithi asicondzise kahle lokho ema interviews asaxhubeka kuliciniso ukuthi sebafikile mhlambe kule interview yegcina laba yenda bona mathupha ephasi ngemaphoyisa sathi akuchubeka nekwenta lihlolo ngamunye ngamunye kwaloyo lo phasile lokuthi akugcina ke ukungiko lokutawusho ukuthi uyangena yini emaphoyisa noma akangena aphindze ahlolwe nasesigabeni sayo yempilo ukuthi ingilewe lefanele yini ukuthi angawenda vele lomsebenzi so kude kwanyalo lo satshelwe ukuthi akasale enda lokuthide futhi ke emaphoyisa nakwendeke ukuthi uniform utithengele wena hulumende usaxhubeka nokuzigcokisa singemaphoyisa kakhulu kathi ke indzaba lengathi nje iyavama kakhulu ngile emali sitha sikwekhude lo kude umuntu lekufana sakho ke imali abhadare umuntu uthide siyeva ukuthi labanye bese bathi imikiswe kubo regional commissioner le etifundzeni akusilo liciniso lelo kude i account number nayinye elphoyisa leke yaphuma lekufana ukuthi kungene imali kuyo sitha sikwekhude nabo ke laba laba fisa kuto ngene maphoyiseni singaba kukhutha ta kusasa levele bacala kusebenda basibambise naba tfola le mlayeto lefana nale basithinze singe maphoyisa basithfolele konke laba ngakuthola lokuyi evidence stokhona ukuthi vele sale sibatrainer nje kukona lokuthi nabo baphoyise baphenye macala bafike nawe egcineni laba ke laba gangako solo siyasho singe maphoyisa sithi sita ucine sibabambile one by one dear viewers now to take a look at our financial updates it can be Welcome back. You're still watching us what in a TV and for sports news tonight. Under 20 national team coach Mtutu Zingumalo says their target is to try and reach the finals of this year's tournament that will be played in the kingdom of Eswatini. Zingumalo says getting three points in their first game against Botswana this coming Friday will boost their confidence. Zingumalo was speaking during the team's training session at Sumshlolo National Stadium, Lobamba. The team behind me in uh, preparations, in training session rather, is uh, the national team under 20. Uh, as you can see, they are in hard preparations uh, for the uh, game against Botswana. The opening game of the tournament, knowing that uh, the Kingdom of Eswatini will be hosting uh, the edition of the 2022 here at Somplo National Stadium at, at Amavuso, uh, being the two venues. So the team got a chance to train here at uh, Somplo National Stadium, where also it was a chance for the media to ask a couple of questions in terms of their preparations. A team coach Mdudu Zingumalo highlighted a few issues including going all out for Friday's game against Botswana as it will give them motivation for the rest of the tournament. We, we said to the boys because you know we the country hasn't been doing well in the under 20. Um, we, we, we want to qualify for the knockout stages but the, the most important thing it is to go to the semi-final then go to the final. The target is the final. That because when you go to the final, even if you don't win the final, but at least you go to, 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 to play in the Nations Cup. Team captain Sinengosi Lamini is well known for playing for Pix Pix Black Swallows in the National First Division. He believes they have got enough time to prepare for the games. <laughs> Yeah, I pray just now, but the good things don't go on. Let's not go in there. Stop, go now, maintain now. Let's maintain now. These under-20 will face Botswana in the opening game here at Somtla National Stadium on Friday, which will be the opening fixture of the tournament. It is free for every Swati who is willing to come and watch the team playing on home soil. For Swati TV Sports, Fabi Sumsonera with Vusum Bamari, Somtla National Stadium, Lobamba. Netbank Swatin has sponsored the 2022 Under 20 Kusafa tournament with a package of 100,000 Malangeni. Representative of Netbank Managing Director Ketsu M. Luli says this is one way of giving back to the community, taking into consideration that football is amongst the most followed sports in the country. The Under 20 tournament that will be hosted in the country begins this coming Friday. 
here at uh, Squatka House, the Swatini Football Association, uh, together with the Kosafa directors, just finished a press conference behind me where they were looking at logistics to update the media in terms of preparations and how things are going ahead of the kickoff for the tournament, under 20 tournament this coming Friday. The Swatini Football Association Chief Executive Officer Fred Ngometur says everything has been put in order with, of course, the help of government and the sponsor, Inyasi Construction, who recently put in two million MLNN. We want to assure the various stakeholders, the partners, sponsors, that we've done our best to receive and also to ensure that we accommodate and provide all complementary infrastructure facilities and services for all our visiting delegations from all the 11 other countries. The Kosafa Chief Executive Officer applauded the job that has been done by the Kingdom of Eswatini in preparations for the under-20 Kosafa tournament. She touched on a couple of issues that include on how, where the infrastructures are looking and how everything has been put in order in terms of preparations for the games that begin this coming Friday. New look, St. Lolo Stadium is just wonderful. Um, it's a you know, beautiful pitch and uh, um, upgrades uh, that they've done, uh, very, very nice. Mavuso uh, also, you know, in, in, good, uh, in good condition. So we're looking forward to being able to have two uh, first-class um, match venues for our tournament. The tournament begins on Friday the 7th to conclude, of course, on the 16th of this month, October, the year 2022. Two facilities will be used for the tournament, being the National Stadium, Somploro, and Mavuso Sports Centre. Last time the Kingdom of Eswatini hosted a tournament of this magnitude was back in 2003. For Eswatini TV Sports, Fabisum Sundara with Patrizum CB, Squatka House, Babani. That is all we had for tonight, but before we wrap up, we'll take a recap of today's headlines. The Deputy Prime Minister Timba Masu says government notes we'd concern the increase in the number of people with autism spectrum disorders in the world. The Minister of Health, Lee Zingo, says his government will go an extra mile to ensure that Maswati do not die of cancer. Public sector unions have signed a 3% cost of living adjustment that was offered by government. That brings us to the end of our news bulletin tonight. Up next is the weather forecast for selected towns. Good night, Aswatini.